the gift of flight, a discovery flight from Ocala Aviation. Call today. It's not too late. 861-7484. That's 861-7484. All right. Thank you very much. Five minutes after 11 o'clock this morning, there was a news story about the Girl Scouts, perhaps uh, for the first time ever, selling their Girl Scout cookies on the Internet. And every, every year when the Girl Scout cookies are for sale, there's usually one girl that makes it into the news for selling so many boxes of cookies. And, of course, that was without uh, having an, inter- an Internet. And, and it is interesting. Here in radio, we see a lot of different salespeople with different sales skills. Yes. Uh, and I can name a few who, for one reason or another, outdid everybody else. And, and it's always a mystery. How come? How come some people can sell so much better than other people? Yeah. And one real quick story. I asked one of the guys who was really good at this, how do you sell so well? What do you do differently than everybody else? He says, well, my secret is I don't sell. Well, I never understood that. I said, well, what do you mean? (laughs) He said, I get to know everybody who becomes a customer before I ever try to sell them. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't that take a lot of time? He said, yeah, but, but if I don't do that, then I don't make any money. Yeah. So it's it's still a mystery to me because you and I do what we do here and the salespeople do what they do out there yes, <laughs> in the office. Do. And we work together and, and thank God for that because I don't know that I could sell. Andy mm-hmm. Paul might disagree. You might tell me, yes, Larry, you can sell. He is our guest. He's the CEO and founder of Zero Time Selling. Uh, he's a leading expert on selling with speed. He's a veteran of multiple technology startup companies, and he's an award-winning author. His book is called Amp Up Your Sales, Powerful Strategies That Move Customers to Make Fast and Favorable Decisions. Andy, Paul, good morning, Andy. How are you? Great, Larry. Thanks for having me on. Where are you right now? I'm in New York City. Can you sell anything, or do you have to believe in it? Uh, uh I think you could sell just by the name thing, but I mean, at some point, you need to be able to believe in it because you have to, you have to be able to work with the customer to be able to help them make a decision. And if you don't believe in it, then yeah, it's all going to be about. It's not going to be very authentic, I guess, is the best way to say it. So how do you? I mean, there's different types of selling. If you're a car, if you're working at a car dealership, you wait for somebody to come in to you. If if you were at a radio station, you're going out to them. With some exceptions, right. some people come in here, but for the most part, these salespeople go out, right? Yes. Sure. Yeah, well, I think that you know, the fundamental is still the same. It's, you know, your customer has a goal in mind. So it's trying to make a decision either to buy an ad on the radio or to buy a car. And to be able to do that, they need a certain amount of information to help them move through their decision-making process. And that's, from a salesperson's perspective, their job is to say, what can I do to help this customer move through that process as quickly as possible? How do you uh, keep salespeople from different companies sounding the same? Because they always try to move their product. They always come up with some kind of line. And sometimes it's exactly the same, and then the customer <laughs> is bored. How do you do that? Yeah. Well, that's a great question, right? And that's really one of the focuses of my book is that how do you, when you're basically selling the same product as everybody else, how do you differentiate yourself? And it really starts by by how you sell. It really starts with, you know, how focused are you on what the customer is trying to accomplish as opposed to what you're trying to get done. And that's really the first step. And so it could be when the customer has a question, how quickly are, do you respond to them? You know, how quickly do you respond with the complete answer for them? Because they only have a limited amount of time to devote to making their decision. If you can help them make the best use of their time, then you're going to stand apart from the other salespeople. Now, I have a question for you because I've had people try to sell me things, let's say on the phone, and um, I've declined, mm-hmm. and then they're, then they're done with me. They're kind of like, okay, bye. And, and they, there's, no, there's no sense that they were even really concerned about me. They were only concerned about selling to me. I've often thought that they don't know how close they were to selling it to me. But now that they just responded that way at the end, there's no chance I'm going to buy from them. And, of course, that might be foolish on my part because maybe what they were selling is something I really wanted. But is there, are there any tricks to the trade, so to speak, about uh, you know, pulling out of a, of a customer who's saying no so that maybe later on they might still say yes? Well, yes, you want to make sure you do this in a way that... that uh you know, you don't burn your bridges, but you have to make a decision as a salesperson. You also have a limited amount of time, and, and at some point, the salesperson has to make an assessment how much time is the customer worth right. in terms of the potential value going forward. So they may not always be right, but 
at some point, as a salesperson, if you're trying to maximize your productivity, you need to make sure that you're talking to a greater number of people that are more likely to buy and fewer that are never going to buy. So should salespeople just make a call first to the business just to see if they're available or they can meet with them face-to-face instead of trying to sell on the phone? Well, right. So these days, given that everything that's available to salespeople online in terms of information they can find out about a company before they ever reach out and talk to them, they should be going on LinkedIn, they should be going to the company's website, going on LinkedIn, looking at the various executives or the key points of contact within the company, see if they have common points of contact that could be a referral source or maybe they have common interests that they could use as a way to, to open a conversation to help break the ice. But you have to do that research, and there's all this information that's available for you, so you don't have to make the cold call the way you did before. Anytime you talk to a new prospect, it should be a really a, a well-informed, warm call. The book is called Amp Up Your Sales. What, what, give us some of the, uh, the pointers that the book uh, stresses. Well, one of the things that we've stressed on from the beginning is that you know, selling is not something you do to someone, to a customer. It's something you do with the customer. You go through this process together. Customers trying to do, in general, buyers these days will be able to make decisions much more quickly than they have in the past. They're crazy busy. They're, you know, pressed for time. So what their job is, they're trying to quickly gather information to make a good decision. If you're a salesperson, your job is not to, you know, impose on the person. Your job is to say, okay, what information do they need and what can I do to help them get that information to be able to make a purchase decision more quickly. So it's much more of a service-oriented approach to selling as opposed to an adversarial approach that you see so often, like in car dealerships and so on. And who makes a better salesperson? Is, is, does it matter if it's a man or a woman? No. Not at all. And, it doesn't make, yeah, and I think that part of what we're seeing in general, especially in, in a lot of the business segments, is that Increasingly, there's a trend to go away from using traditional salespeople as sellers, but get product experts and industry experts and people that have the knowledge that they can convey to the customer to help them, again, move through their buying process more quickly. That is what's valued by customers these days. I, I mentioned in the intro that for the first time the, in, in ever, the, uh, the Girl Scouts are going to allow their cookies to be sold online. Are there any tips? Yes, I saw that. Are, are there any tips for the person who uses online? I mean, do we... Do our websites need to adhere to some of the same principles that the, the in-person salesperson uses? Yes. And so if you sort of look at, there's sort of two phases to people's buying experience these days. They have what I call a shopping phase where almost invariably any product that we buy, we're going to go online and we're going to do our research first. Yeah. And at some point when we can't gather any more information on the website or online and we still have questions, then we need to talk to the salesperson. And so the better you can be as a company, if you want, is to say, how, how can we put even more information out there in a meaningful way that, that maps to how the customer is going to make their decision? And if we can take them further before they have to talk to a salesperson, then that's going to be a quicker process for them. Are there, are there any um, beginner's mistakes that salespeople make? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Like, like if I was new at sales, what would be a common mistake that a new salesperson would make? Telling more than you listen. And that's the biggest mm. mistake with sales. They're so anxious to sort of tell what they know instead of asking a question and listen to what the customer has to say about what the requirements are. Really? So, so Yeah. Can, so anytime can, you get a chance, I like to say, anytime you get a chance to tell something, ask a question instead. So try to sell me your book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I already know what it's called. Amp up your sales, and Andy Paul is the author. Now try to sell it to me. Let me hear how the, how you work as a salesperson. Oh, I don't think it's a good representation. But are you in sales? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. So I wouldn't spend my time trying to sell it to you because I'd qualify you as somebody that wasn't a problem. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Wow. I don't even qualify as a customer. <laughs> Uh, well, I thought maybe fact, somebody one, else. One of, one, of the, one, of the, one of the basic lessons of sales is you only want to sell your product to people that have a need for it. Okay. Well, that, if you're not in sales, you don't have a need for it. Well, they, okay, wow. I was hoping one of my listeners would have a need for it, yeah. though. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's offer it for sale online, then, because that's probably the best way to buy it. Am I right? Yeah. Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com are two great places to buy the book. And I have a website, ZeroTimeSelling.com. Is that right? 
It's zero time selling. And actually, the brand new website I'm launching is andypaul.com. And you'll get lots of information about the book there. Okay, andypaul.com. The book again is called Amp Up Your Sales. Sounds like a good piece of information. I've seen some salespeople who are really good at it and others who are not. So I, I'll, one of these days I'll learn the difference. Andy, thank you for being on the air with us today. Larry, thanks for having me. All right, we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, times of clouds and sunshine. There can be a brief shower at spots, the high 76 to 80. And partly cloudy tonight, there may be a shower along the coast, lows ranging from the upper 50s well inland to about 65 along the coast. Tomorrow, intervals of clouds and sun with a couple of brief showers around, highs.